Good day everybody, this is Christopher Bear and I'm going to be doing a video to supplement the lab and lecture experience uh, that you've had in uh, Human Anatomy and Physiology 1 or Biology 225 Section D08. So we've just completed our histology lab and uh, there were a couple of dozen uh, different slides that we looked at. A lot of new terms came up and a lot of confusing concepts came up and it's just, this tends to be a pretty tough and pretty detailed lab and, and it can um, be very problematic when it comes to studying and when it comes to looking at things and so what I thought I'd do is I'd take the opportunity to make a video and talk about histology in a little more detail and actually show you guys specific examples of tissue slides. Um, I have included some additional some other resources in uh, Canvas for you guys include uh, the Crash Course Anatomy and Physiology videos and the Bozeman Science videos. Uh, these are both very good sources, very good references, and their production quality is very high. Um, the one thing that this particular video will have an up on those, those resources is that in this video or this series of videos, um, I'm going to be using pictures of actual tissue slides that we used in the lab um, and of course these will be the tissue slides that you'll be tested over so uh, we'll actually be looking at the the actual slides themselves um, that you'll be tested on as, as opposed to some of these other resources that, that will be looking at different slides and and as you found out in lab um, tissue is very nuanced and there some of the characteristic or classic things that you see with tissues uh, may or may not necessarily be present on one slice of tissue versus another slice of the same tissue so this will be nice for consistency okay so let's just do a quick review of the basic concepts so human body contains uh, over 200 individual cell types I believe there are there are about 210 different cell types and it can be very overwhelming to try to memorize each cell type but luckily what we see is that we see uh, groups of similar cells that come together to perform a, a limited or very specific number of, of specialized functions and when we see this uh, this is uh, what's known as histology or, or tissue rather um, tissue is what contains uh, two or more cell types working together to perform very very specific or a limited number of tasks or functions and the study of these tissues is what we call histology. Histology is overwhelmingly um, microscopic in nature so falls under the umbrella of microscopic anatomy and in histology the over the overriding concept of, of form following function and, vi and function following form is critically important because there are key structures uh, that we can appreciate in tissue in the, in the histology slides and these key structures inform us as to the function uh, or some of the possible functions of that particular tissue so there's a very uh, there's a, v a very robust marriage of this form following function concept that we've talked about in earlier lectures uh, in the in histology of the study of tissues. Okay, so just to review the major tissue types, you have a nervous tissue, muscular tissue, epithelial tissue, and connective tissue. Uh, many people, when they lecture over these topics, they tend to start the conversation um, around epithelial tissue. I am not going to do that because what I found is epithelial and connective tissues are highly nuanced they have very specific <clears throat> terms that are used and it can be very overwhelming to talk about them so what I'm going to do in this series of videos is I'm going to start with tissues that are less nuanced a little easier to identify key structures and there's less terminology that we have to learn so we're going to start with nervous and muscular tissue uh, first and then we'll move on and talk about epithelial and connective tissues a little later on Okay, let's, let's go ahead and start at nervous tissue. So, uh, nervous tissue is also known as neural tissue, and this is a specialized tissue. This is kind of the command and control tissue, and it's found primarily in the uh, brain and spinal cord, but there are 
Obviously, uh, there's nervous tissue that permeates uh, the body because this tissue is involved in command and control, and so it does go uh, throughout most parts of the body, but it is heavily concentrated uh, within the brain and spinal cord. Uh, the primary characteristics of nervous tissue physiologically is that it is really designed, or it has evolved rather, to um, take in, okay, to take in information, to process information, and then to send information out. So it, it receives information, it processes information, and then it sends information out. So conduction of uh, impulses is primarily what we see. When we look at nervous tissue, it has a very characteristic kind of, kind of structure, the histology slide. And uh, there are two general types of cells that we see in this tissue. We see what are called neurons. And neurons are the functional units of, of neural tissue. These are the actual units that are receiving the information, processing the information, and then sending the information. But how, however, that requires a lot of support. Okay, These neurons require a lot of support. And the support is uh, done by what are called the glial cells or the neural glia. And there are several different types of glial cells, but we don't have to memorize all the different types of glial cells uh, at this particular juncture in human anatomy and physiology. So if you look at this tissue slide here, this is a picture from the lab last night, uh, you see some very characteristic structures. You see these little star shaped structures here. These are kind of star shaped and you see that they have a large dark nucleus in the middle of them. There's one here. Actually the pointer is, is pointing at the, the nucleus of one of these star structures. Um, I've got another star structure here, another one here, and a few more over here. And these are actually the bodies of the neurons themselves. So the neuron is really divided into three major components. You have what are called the dendrites. And the dendrites are little projections that come uh, off of the cell body. And uh, you can actually see some of these projections here. There's a projection here, here. Okay, and they're very subtle coming off of the cell body. And these are known as dendrites. And these uh, extensions are actually what receive information. So information comes into the body of the neuron through these dendrites. And then that information is processed within the body of the neuron. It's also known as the soma. And the soma, or body of the neuron, contains the nucleus and all of the uh, major organelles. Once that information is processed, it is then sent away from the neuron. It leaves. Um, the processed information leaves the neuron through a projection, a large projection in some cases known as an axon. So axons take information away from neurons. Dendrites bring information into the neurons. If we just go ahead and zoom in a little bit, okay, we'll magnify uh, this neuro tissue. Um, and we can clearly see all of the, the, the projections that come off of these neurons here. And these, uh, these kind of these dark lines here are more than likely the axons. And then these, these less dark or these more subtle lines here are more than likely dendrites coming into the cell bodies. And then you see all of these little dots all over the place surrounding the neurons. And those little dots are actually the nuclei of the individual glial cells. So this is classically what we find with nervous tissue. OK, we'll move on to muscle tissue. So uh, muscle tissue, the primary role of muscle tissue is, is movement. Any, anywhere we have movement within the body, muscle tissue is involved. There are three flavors or three different types of muscle tissue. You have skeletal muscle, and this is attached to our skeletons. It's, it's uh, attached to our bones. And the major role of skeletal muscle is to move bones. So this is how I walk, I jump, I stand, I pick things up. I have all of that major gross movement of my my axle and appendicular skeleton is the result of a skeletal muscle contraction, contracting and relaxing. Uh, the other type of uh, 
muscle tissue is what's known as cardiac muscle. And this is muscle that is specific to the heart. It's the only place that we find this. And this is the what allows the heart to contract and pump blood throughout the body. And then finally, we have what's called smooth muscle. And smooth muscle is located in several areas of the body. It is located within our blood vessels, and it allows our blood vessels to contract and dilate or constrict and dilate and change their size and help with regulation of blood pressure. We find smooth muscle in the gastrointestinal or the GI tract, and this is what allows um, for a stuff to transit or move through the GI tract, and it allows for a special kind of motion known as peristalsis or waves, peristaltic waves that help push food and uh, digested material through um, our, our gastrointestinal uh, system or our GI tract. Uh, smooth muscles found within our lungs as well, and all the um, the uh, tubes or what we call the bronchioles that uh, that that go from the upper airways down into the lower airways can um, change their size. They can constrict and dilate, and that is the result of smooth muscle. We also have smooth muscle in our uterus. The uterus. Uh, is a very large collection of smooth muscle tissue and of course that's important when it comes to uh, the delivery process of a baby because you need that muscle contraction to help to help uh, push that that baby out of the body when it's ready to be born um, and then we do have uh, smooth muscle in some more minor areas such as the eye it is uh, Contra uh, contraction and relaxation of smooth muscle that allows our pupil to constrict and dilate as well. So you have smooth muscle in several areas throughout our body. Okay, so if we take a look at skeletal muscle, the 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 characteristic findings that uh, uh, that are associated with skeletal muscle is that these are long, multinucleated cells. So what you're actually seeing here, these little strands here. Okay, these are actually individual muscle cells, so they're very long. And in some cases, you may hear the term muscle fiber, and a muscle fiber is just uh, what we use to describe these muscle cells. We're actually looking at individual cells here. Um, so they're very long, and because they're very long, they are also multinucleated. That is to say that there is more than one nucleus. Uh, within these cells. So this is highly characteristic of skeletal muscle. And then the final thing that we use to uh, differentiate skeletal muscle from the other types of tissue is that m m skeletal muscle is striated. It has these uh, lines, these, 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 these lines that in this particular picture, um, these, these little lines, it's a little tough to see, but these little lines um, kind of run from right to left and they kind of transect. And uh, what we'll do is we will uh, zoom in on this to, to uh, appreciate the striations. Um, and the striations are caused by contractile fibers within the muscle tissue known as actin and myosin. So again, it, the skeletal muscle comes in these long fibers here, okay, and these are individual cells. And you can see that there are multiple nuclei within these cells. And you can even see right through here, for example, you can see this striation pattern here, which is characteristic. You see some striation pattern here as well. Um, so these are the major uh, components of uh, identifying skeletal muscle. Now, if I zoom in on the skeletal muscle, you can clearly see this striated pattern here. You can clearly see this striated pattern that that kind of transects or goes through um, these muscle cells or these muscle fibers. Okay, and then the last type of uh, muscle tissue that will, or the second type rather, is known as cardiac muscle. Now, cardiac muscle is very different from the other two types. Um, cardiac muscle is striated like skeletal muscle, but cardiac muscle, you see, has a very characteristic branched pattern. See how it branches out? and it kind of has this tree or plant-like branching pattern that you do not see in skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle kind of has this straight pattern here, okay? They're kind of straight and lined up. Whereas you kind of have this kind of chaotic almost looking branching pattern. Um, the other classic 
component or classic structure that we can appreciate in cardiac muscle are these these long or the, rather these short thin lines that um, are that differentiate individual um, cardiac muscle cells so you have a cardiac muscle cell here you have this line this dark line like structure and then another one here this structure here is what's known as an intercalated disc and an intercalated disc is a a type of junction a tight junction between two individual cells and that junction actually contains a little channel between it it's actually what's known as a sodium channel and that allows sodium ions to travel from one cell into the other and what the, the what this is and we'll talk about this in more detail when we actually talk about muscle tissue and the musculoskeletal system and certainly when you talk about uh, cardiology <clears throat> is this allows the impulse the the signal that causes these muscle cells to contract um, it allows that to be communicated to adjacent cells because remember the heart needs to contract in a certain way to be able to efficiently pump that blood and this is one of those specialized structures that has evolved to facilitate that in a cardiac muscle if we zoom in on cardiac muscle I've just uh, have been able to identify a few more intercalated discs again you can clearly see the striated pattern here but you can see that it's branching muscle and then you can see these straight lines going through or separating the individual cells, the intercalated discs. There's one here with an arrow, there's one here, and then you've got an intercalated disc here as well. Okay, that's going to conclude the first video um, on uh, histology, and those are the first two major types of tissues that we have already talked about. Actually, it's not. We have one more tissue to go, don't we? We have smooth muscle. Smooth muscle tissue is very different than the other types. The classic thing that differentiates smooth muscle from cardiac and skeletal is that smooth muscle is not striated. The cells are rather small and spindle-shaped. They're short, they're spindle-shaped, and they have a single central nucleus. They are not multinucleated. So they're, they have a very subtle appearance. They're short, they're spindle, they have a single nucleus, and uh, they are not long like uh, the skeletal muscle, and they are not, they do not have intercalated discs, and they're not striated like um, the cardiac muscle. So if we zoom in, if we take a look at this, you can see that you have what kind of appears at first glance to maybe be skeletal muscle but there clearly is no striation pattern here and the cells themselves are not very long they're re they're rather short and they're rather spindly in their appearance and that's what uh, differentiates smooth muscle tissue from the other types of tissues okay so now we're at the end of the first video we have covered the first two major tissue types uh, neural or nervous tissue and muscle tissue. In the next video, we will talk about epithelial tissue and then we'll finish off with a final video talking about connective tissue. Hopefully you found this uh, video helpful and uh, I'll see you guys in the next lecture or lab. Take care. Bye-bye.